Hi, welcome to this video, another in my series on how we can work with Newton's law of motion. In other words, force equals mass times acceleration. And what I've got here is an example where we've got a particle that's going to accelerate up a rough inclined plane. So we've got this particle then, a particle of mass 5 kilograms, lies on a rough plane inclined at 20 degrees to the horizontal. And there's a force of 36 newtons which is applied to this particle parallel and up the line of greatest slope of the plane. And if the particle accelerates up the plane at 2 meters per second per second, we've got to find mu, the coefficient of friction, between the particle and the plane. So Here's the start of our drawing. We would need to add to this. So if we're going to add to this, we need to mark on a few forces. So we've got the force of 36 newtons, which is pushing this particle up the plane. Let's just mark that on, 36 newtons. We've got the weight of the particle. Weight is mg, and that's going to act downwards. The mass is 5, so it's going to be 5g newtons. And we'll take g as 9.8 meters per second per second when it comes to the working out. We've got a contact force from the particle on the plane. We'll call that r, r newtons. And because the plane is rough and this particle is accelerating up the slope, we'll just mark that in with a double arrow here, at 2 meters per second per second, because it's moving up the slope, there's going to be friction opposing motion. So we'll put that frictional force in there. And that frictional force we'll call F. And because it is moving across this rough surface, then friction must be limiting. So in that case, the frictional force F is equal to mu R, mu R newtons. Okay, well that's all the forces acting on the particle. Now whenever you've got a problem where you've got it on a plane, it's always a good idea to draw a dotted line, say, or a line anyway, that's perpendicular to the plane. And we're going to be dealing with angles here, so this angle is always exactly the same as the angle of the plane. So in this example, this is going to be 20 degrees. So, when it comes to working out the coefficient of friction mu, I can see that it's in this equation here, which involves finding out what r is and what f is. So I'm going to get r first of all by considering the forces perpendicular to the plane. I'm going to resolve, in other words, perpendicular to the plane, and I'm going to take out from the plane, away from the plane as positive. It's up to you, you can go into the plane if you wish, but I'm going to go out away from the plane because that means that first of all this force of R Newtons, all of it acts in this direction, so I can just keep that as a positive term. So we've got R. What other forces have we got? Well we've got 36 Newtons, and we've got the frictional force here. Both these forces are perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. So they're not going to enter this equation here. But we have the weight, and this is inclined at 20 degrees to this direction. So we need to think of splitting this force into two components. And those two components would be one that is down the plane, and one that is into the plane. Now the one that's into the plane, this one here, contains the angle of 20 degrees. So when it contains an angle, it's always the cosine of that angle. So this component here will be 5g cos of 20 degrees. Whereas the component down the plane, that's that one down there, because it doesn't contain the angle, would be 5g sine 20 degrees. Let's just squeeze that in there, 5g sine of 20 degrees. I hope you can see that. 
Okay, so when it comes to resolving then, we can see that all we're interested in is this component, the one into the plane. This one is perpendicular to the direction, so it'll have no effect. So if we carry on here, it's going to be minus, because this acts into the plane in the opposite sense to that, so it'll be minus 5g cosine of 20 degrees. So that's the resultant force on the particle relative to the plane in that direction, away from the plane. But that resultant is zero because it's neither moving off the plane or collapsing into the plane. Relative to the plane in this direction, it is not moving. So that resultant force will be equal to zero. And so if we rearrange this for r, r would equal 5g cosine of 20 degrees. And if we work that out on the calculator, you should find you get r turns out to be 46.0449 and so on. And I won't bother rounding that up because we're going to use this value later on in the problem. Okay, so let's carry on then. The next thing we need to do is try and calculate what F is, the frictional force. So I can do that by resolving parallel to the plane. And it's always a good idea when you're resolving with um, a particle moving up or down a plane, resolve in the direction that it moves. So it's going to move up the plane in this example. So I'm going to resolve up the plane. So when it comes to resolving up the plane, what forces have we got? Well, we've got all of this force of 36 newtons acting up the plane. So that's going to be plus 36. R doesn't come into this because this is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. But the frictional force, F, well, that acts down the plane. All of it acts down the plane, so that's going to be minus F. Now, when we come to the weight, we can split that into two components, one down the plane and one into the plane. The one into the plane has no effect because it's perpendicular to this direction. But the one down the plane does have an effect. It's going to be minus, because it's acting in the opposite sense to this, minus, and it'll be 5g sine 20 degrees. So that's all the forces acting on the particle. But because it's accelerating up the plane, then this resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So the mass is 5 kilograms and the acceleration is 2 meters per second per second. So we're applying force equals mass times acceleration here in this equation. All we need to do now is just rearrange this to get F. So if I was to add F to both sides and subtract essentially 10 from both sides, then I would get that F is equal to 36 minus the 10 here minus the 5g sine of 20 degrees. And if you work this out on your calculator, you should find you get 9.2410 and so on, newtons. So we know that friction, because it's limiting the particle is sliding along this rough surface here, the friction must equal mu r. So we could say since the frictional force F equals mu r, it follows from that result that if we rearrange this for mu, divide both sides by r, it follows that mu must be equal to F divided by r. So I can call back these results for F, which was 9.24 one zero and so on, divide that by the contact force R, which was 46.0449 and so on. Divide that out, you should find you get 0 0.2006 and so on. And if we round that, say, to what, two decimal places, then that's going to be 0 0.20 to 2dp. Okay, so 
hope that's given you some idea on how we can use resolving and Newton's law of motion when it comes to a particle moving up an inclined plane, a rough inclined plane with a given acceleration. Okay?